What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. Today we are going to be in a very fun one. This is the 2020 BMW X7, courtesy of Apple BMW in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. I'm excited to be in this one because there is one major change for the 2020 X7. I will be going over that. This is a very good looking luxury SUV as well with a ton of interior quality with the Alcantara headliner, I could already tell. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into this one. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 X7. First one being the X-Drive 40i, starting at $73,900. X Drive 50i starting at $92,600. And I'm just going to jump right into it. The one major change for 2020 being the trim level we are in today. New trim level M50i starting at $99,600. This is a brand new trim level for the 2020 X7. And I have it today. That's pretty exciting to me, at least. But as you can imagine, though, with those three different trim levels, there are three different engine setups to go along with that. First one belonging to the X Drive 40i being a three liter twin power turbocharged inline six cylinder, putting out 335 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 330 pound feet of torque available at 1,500 RPM, power sent to all wheels. This is an all wheel drive configuration, regardless of which trim level that you go with through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, producing a zero to 60 time for that engine setup, approximately 5.4 seconds according to Motor Trend. That's a very impressive for a three row SUV, especially for the base engine setup. It's even more impressive, but MPG numbers for that one, 20 in the city, 25 on the highway. Next engine setup belonging to the X-Drive 50i. This one is going to be a 4.4 liter twin power turbocharged V8, putting out 456 horsepower at 5,250 RPM, 179 pound feet of torque available at 1500 rpm sent to all four wheels once again same transmission eight speed automatic with paddle shifter zero to 60 time 5.2 seconds according to bmw with mpg numbers coming in at 15 in the city 21 on the highway a little more power there but then the last engine setup the current one belonging to the m trim level the one we have today it's actually the same engine setup the 4.4 liter but it is an M Performance tuned 4.4 liter. So it's a slightly different version of it, cranking out 523 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 553 pound feet of torque available at 1,800 RPM, sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters. And we will be testing those out in a little bit here, but zero to 60 time Motor Trend clocked it in at 4.5 seconds in a three row SUV. That's a beautiful thing. With MPG numbers coming in at 15 in the city, 21 on the highway. Actually not bad considering a three row SUV with over 500 horsepower, but nonetheless, do want to mention the driving modes before we do that acceleration and paddle shifter test. Those driving modes are located directly behind the shifter there that will include Eco Pro, Comfort, and Sport adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put it in sport mode here and let's test out the paddle shifters first. I wanna see how quickly they react for us. We are in an SUV after all. And I'll let you guys know in a second. All right, let's test them out. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness, this thing sounds like a beast. <laughs> paddle shifters are ridiculously quick, like supercar quick. As expected, every time I drive a BMW, the paddle shifters are crazy. So absolutely love that. By the way, to put that in manual shift mode, what I did was put the shifter all the way to the back to the left. And now I'm going to put it back to the right. And that's going to give the M50i here back full control. What do you say? Let's come to a quick stop here. Do a quick little zero to 60 and there we go. Oh my gosh, no turbo lag. Holy cow. <laughs> this is an SUV, are you kidding? Okay. You can feel it in your stomach without a doubt. The M50i is absolutely wonderful in the X7. It feels like zero to 60 and 4.5. The best part about it, there's no slipping. I drive a Mustang GT, so sometimes when I hit the gas, I slip, but with an all wheel drive setup, like the X-Drive all wheel drive system by BMW, there's no slippage whatsoever. So it's instant power to the ground, instant acceleration. And again, like I said, 
no turbo lag on this one instant acceleration there so absolutely wonderful but so anyways as always to go along with that acceleration braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes i did want to add to that though the m50i that we have today does add m sport brakes when you add all of that up together as far as the 60 to 0 stopping distance goes that's going to come in at 105 feet which is absolutely amazing for comparison's sake here's why let's say the hyundai palisade i know it's not a luxury suv but it's a very popular three row suv right now 129 feet to stop from 60 that is not even in the same realm as 105 feet that's wonderful even the mercedes gls if you're comparing those two luxury suvs the mercedes comes in at 120 feet as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes so 105 feet really is above and beyond as far as braking goes and that is a good thing if you ever have to come to a quick stop and rush hour traffic or let alone if you have kids in the car so that is something you definitely want to pay attention to and that's wonderful thing like i said but anyways touching on suspension and handling a little bit yes it does get better independent front end rear suspension that's pretty basic but all trim levels will also give you an air suspension. Yes, I'm even talking about the X-Drive 40i. Air suspension is important because whenever you see that, you know the ride quality is gonna be absolutely wonderful. And it is, by the way, the ride quality is wonderful in this one. But not only that, BMW takes it a step further and gives it an adaptive damping suspension as well. Again, for all trim levels, even the X-Drive 40i. But what that does is that gives you the best of both worlds. It tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling, but it also monitors each shock absorber individually, giving you a smoother ride. So it's gonna detect things like, like I'm about to hit a manhole, you can barely even tell it was there. I heard it, but I couldn't really feel it at all. So that is one of the wonderful parts about the adaptive damping suspension. So I'm very glad that BMW included that on the X7. Although I guess at this price point, it is to be expected. Nonetheless, like I said, ride quality is absolutely amazing. Steering feel is Eh, it's so-so. I will say even in sport mode, it's probably not as heavy as I would have liked it to have been, especially with this being the M50i. But still, we are in an SUV, and I don't think many people are going to be taking this one to the circuit track, perhaps, and racing this. So it is pretty much right on point for this one. As far as cabin noise goes, the only thing I'm really getting is the interior climate control right now. So cabin noise is wonderfully on point, as expected once again in the X7. But perhaps my biggest surprise on this one, the second I got in the X7, visibility is amazing a lot of times with three row suvs you find visibility being somewhat cumbersome a lot of times those c pillars in the back are quite beefy and a lot of times the headrests don't fold down like they do right now for me so i can see absolutely beautifully out the back really one of the best if not the best when it comes to three row suv visibility at least so i love that to go along with that rain sensing windshield wipers come standard and there is a head-up display that i am currently looking at that is going to come with the x drive 50i the m50i and there's actually a premium package for the x drive 40i you can still get it there as well but that's going to give me the speed limit as well as the speed i am currently going displaying up on that windshield there so it's going to help you better keep your eyes on the road so again visibility plus there as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys what do you say let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 bmw x7 all right here she is you guys the 2020 bmw x7 finished in mineral white metallic if anybody was curious about the exterior color name let's go ahead and start up front here large active kidney front grill with active shutters behind that front grill that are closed right now and what they do is they open and close if engine cooling is needed they'll open if engine cooling is not needed they will go ahead and close themselves so it's a pretty cool little design there chrome grill surrounds are going to come standard with the non m trims however what you were looking at right now is like a satin chrome bronze kind of grill surround so it definitely looks good up there and that's specific to the m50i of course and also the m50i will give you a revised front bumper with nice beefy air curtains in the bottom two corners of that front bumper so they definitely look more aggressive up there to the sides adaptive led headlights coming standard they will come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at a night they're going to turn on automatically for you there also automatic high beams coming standard led fog lights standard for all trims led daytime running lights as well and if you wanted that bmw laser light technology that we do have here today that is going to actually come standard with the m50i essentially what that is is that is the brightest illumination allowed by law so that is definitely going to help assist you at night we'll be driving at night knowing you have the very brightest lights that are available at this current time but anyways that does it for the front let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the x7 here so to start satin aluminum roof rails will come with the x40 and x50i gloss 
black roof rails are going to come with the M50i. That's what you're looking at right now. Satin aluminum window surrounds for the X40, X50. Gloss black window surrounds for the M50. And when it comes to those side mirrors, they typically will be body colored power adjustable side mirrors that will come heated with LED integrated turn signals. However, with the M50i, you'll find that satin bronze finish that is actually continued down along the side skirts, along with the accenting in the front fender as well. But it definitely, definitely makes a statement. Definitely looks good there. And that actually ties together with the wheel color as well. And I'll get to that in a second here. Another thing I wanted to mention though is running boards are available for an additional $400 if you wanted to go that route. Another really cool thing about the X7 is the soft closed doors. That is actually going to come with the X50i and M50i. It's going to come with a premium pack for the X40i. But essentially what that is, is if you do not close the door all the way by accident, or if you just want to make sure that is 100% closed every single time, if you just get that door close to being shut, the X7 is going to kind of suck it in like a vacuum essentially. So it's going to shut the door for you. It's pretty darn cold. Mercedes-Benz does that too, but I always get a kick out of that. And take a look down at the wheel setup though. 21 inch Y spoke alloy wheels with run flats come with the X40 and X50i. 22 inch V spoke alloys with run flats are going to come with the M50i. And that of course is what you guys are currently looking at right now. And again, they're going to come with that satin bronze finish that I definitely am a fan of, but let's go ahead and make our way to the back here. Shark fin antenna up top rear spoiler with an integrated brake light rear window wiper back there as well of course with our m 50i we have that m badging in the back definitely looks good and we do have that satin bronze bar that ties together the two taillights that's going to be replaced with chrome if you were to go with the x40 or x50i led taillights also coming standard on this one regardless of which trim level that you go with but perhaps my very favorite part let's check it out integrated dual exhaust outlets meaning they're built into the rear bumper i've always loved that bmw does that and again we got the satin bronze tips that look so good otherwise it's going to be a chrome perimeter but really the tips are actually inside that little enclosure but nonetheless i do believe you guys know what we have to do next i do think this is going to sound good because we have the m50i but let's go ahead and take a listen as always here is that exhaust clip But now since we are around back, I do want to mention when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it of course is a power rear lift gate. Hands-free option is available, meaning just kick your foot underneath the bumper, it's gonna open up for you. So either way is there for you if you wanted it. But once opened up, as far as that cargo capacity goes, behind the third row, that comes in at 12.8 cubic feet. With that second row folded down, that is going to come in at 48.6 cubic feet. And with all rows folded down, that comes in at 90.4 cubic feet which quite honestly is a substantial amount. Cars like the Honda Pilot I know with 84 cubic feet. My three row Hyundai Santa Fe has 80 cubic feet. So definitely 90 cubic feet is a decent amount for a three row SUV. But also in that cargo area, you can find LED cargo lighting. Most of the times you don't see LED back there. So that's good. In floor storage and quite a bit of it back there as well. Tie down anchors, there's a 12 volt power outlet, cargo cover. It was quite easy to fold down those rear seats. I will say that as well. So definitely cargo area is very well done the BMW X7 making your way to the rear legroom this is going to be best left for kids I'll give this a shot for you guys though for reference I am an even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there I will say even though it's best left for kids that second row is kind of adjustable so you can slide the second row up if the second row passengers have some room so that the third row passenger can be a little more comfortable so that's an option too if you wanted to do that all right so one quick thing i wanted to mention to you guys before i continue i am in the third row right now let me see if i can get down here there is actually a panoramic moonroof that is located in the third row as well not just the second row and not only that rear passengers in this third row also have heated seats. Just wanted to mention that to you guys. Making our way to the second row legroom though, that comes in at 37.6 inches. And this is really the sweet spot for the X7. There's so much going on in the second row. I absolutely love it. For reference, I mean even six feet tall, by the way, this is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation comes standard for all three rows. And by the way, the X7 seats either seven or six. The back row is always gonna have two seats, but the center row can come with bench seating or captain's chairs. That's gonna be your pick there. Rear phone charging ports also come standard. And that's gonna be what those little things are on the back of the front seats there. Rear window sunshades are gonna come with the premium package, so they're available for you as well. 
five zone climate control is also available. That's pretty crazy. Heated rear seats are gonna be available with the cold weather pack, which we actually do happen to have today. That goes for $1,200, by the way, but gotta love spoiling the rear passengers a little bit with those heated rear seats. That's definitely a good thing. And perhaps my favorite part, yes, the seats are comfortable, but the headrest, whether it be the front or the back, they're like little pillows for your head. <laughs> they're some of the most comfortable headrests I've experienced in quite a while here in the X7. So definitely a very comfortable setup for those rear passengers. But let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats now. 16-way power adjustable front seats come standard. That comes with two-way power side bolsters as well. That is my favorite seat adjustment because that kind of holds you in place if you take the turns a little bit faster. So I love that. Four-way power lumbar. Of course, you get memory settings for up to two different drivers. They are heated as well. And by the way, ventilated front seats are optional. Massaging front seats are optional. So you got those options if you wanted to go that route. And again, overall, the seats are extremely comfy as expected here in the X7. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. And in the M50i, at least, the bolsters, the 10 and 2 grips, are absolutely ridiculous. They're so thick. It gives you such a better feeling of being in control of the X7. I personally love it. You do get a little smaller 10 and 2 grips if you go with the X40 or X50, but the M50, definitely thicker grips there. So I do like that. Heated steering wheel, again, available with the cold weather package. Therefore, we do have it today. That's gonna to be located just above the M logo at the bottom portion of the steering wheel there. And of course, it's leather wrapped pretty much as expected at this price point, but let's make our way to the startup now. Let me show you guys the fancy key and you will get the M colors if you go with the M50i. It's gonna be located on the uh, the side of the key there. Of course, you got lock, unlock, the button pop, the rear hatch, the lock button is the BMW logo in the middle there, but we'll say it's all keyless entry. So simply just keep the key in your pocket if you like. Walk up to the X7. There is a push button start located just to the left of the shifter. So I'm just gonna put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there. And so once started up, if you're wondering about that digital gauge cluster, yes, it is standard across the board. It is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster x40i all trims will get it you can adjust a little bit on it by using the steering wheel mount to controls on the right side it's also going to give you your navigation information front and center we're not really on a road right now so you're not going to be able to see it really it's also going to tell you how many miles you have left until you hit empty apparently that's what it's showing me right now also going to tell you your driving modes and honestly there's a ton of other information a little digital speedometer up there if you wanted it so a very nice digital gauge cluster up there but now let me get to my favorite part Overall interior quality, of course, the first thing you notice the second you get in any BMW. Panoramic moonroof comes standard, by the way, on all trim levels. However, there is an LED sky lounge roof that is going to come with the executive package and that essentially gives you LED lighting located surrounding the panoramic moonroof. And actually, it has a little design on the moonroof itself. It kind of makes it look like stars at night. The last X7 I reviewed last year did have it. It was absolutely a wonderful thing. So definitely a huge fan of that option. That's part of the executive package for $4,100. Alcantara headliner is optional for $1,000. That's what we have today. Ocean blue headliner is available how many times do you see a vehicle with a blue headliner and a blue interior that's the one i would pick if i were to get the x7 quite honestly universal garage door opener can be found on the bottom portion of the rear view mirror that's for up to three different garage doors wireless phone charger comes standard four zone climate control comes standard the five zone is optional executive package though also gives you glass controls that is what we do have here today so if you look at the volume knob that's going to give you glass controls the shifter itself the circular dial beside the shifter and the push button start and i absolutely love the glass controls you never see that on any other vehicle out there so I'm a huge fan of that too. Heated and cooled cup holders coming with the executive package as well. You almost never see that on vehicles out there. Love that. Ambient lighting coming standard as well. There is genuine wood trim that comes standard on every trim level of the X7. There's nice leather finishes with contrast stitching found up on the dash here. And again, when you pair that up with the Alcantara headliner, it feels like you were in a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a BMW, really, I should say, because the interior quality BMW is always known for absolutely killing it when it comes to interior quality. And there is a little storage up here in front of the shifter. That's where you're gonna find those cup holders, USB charging port, 12 volt power outlet to access the center armrest, which by the way is optional heated. You can get that center armrest heated with the cold weather package, I forgot to mention that. There is a decent amount of storage in there as well. There is an additional phone charging port in there too. And 
overall, again, it doesn't get much better when it comes to interior quality when you're inside a BMW. So I absolutely love it, especially those glass controls. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display, 12.3 inch color touchscreen display to match the gauge cluster, of course. And again, it is touchscreen, but you can also adjust it using voice activation. There's also that circular dial and buttons just to the right of the shifter and gesture control. That is optional. It comes with the executive package. We do have that here today. So to turn the radio up, for instance, if I just circle my finger in a clockwise rotation, that is going to turn up the radio and vice versa to turn it back down. And there's a bunch of other stuff you can do with gesture control too. It's pretty darn cool. I love it. But anyways, Bluetooth and audio streaming comes standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation comes standard. But perhaps my favorite part about this tech display is what is called experience modes that gives you executive, expressive, and well-being. Essentially what they will do is adjust the ambient lighting colors, climate control settings, seat ventilation, sun protection, meaning the panoramic moonroof, it'll close that for executive mode, for instance. It's such a cool thing having experience modes. BMW always does that. I love that. Climate control settings, of course, can be adjusted up there. Ambient lighting settings and your radio information. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system here, you will find 10 speakers and 205 watts. That's the standard setup. However, there is an optional 16 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. It goes for $875. That's the one we have today with 464 watts. So what do you guys say? Let's turn on the radio. I'm going to use my gesture control and let's see what we got playing and test out the clarity of this thing. <laughs> Definitely a very nice sound system. Not the best song to showcase bass or anything like that, but certainly more than enough of a sound system for the X7. My favorite sound system is still Bowers and Wilkins, which BMW does offer in some vehicles, but Harman Kardon is definitely where it's at too. So no disappointments with that Harman Kardon sound system there. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display at least is when you do put the X7 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels of course. Parking assistance package is going to add the 360 degree view monitor. And that of course is what you were looking at right now. There's a couple different angles you can press on that screen as well if you wanted to get a side view or a front view or whatever. So that's a pretty cool little display there as well. But anyways, as always, that is going to lead us into safety. So when it comes to safety, front side, side curtain, airbags will come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system comes standard. Auto dimming rear view and driver's side side mirror. Sometimes you don't see that in SUVs. That's pretty cool. Some of the more advanced standard safety features are going to include daytime pedestrian detection, frontal collision warning with city collision mitigation, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert in the side mirrors, adaptive cruise control and of course there are some optional safety features like that driving assistance package actually gives you partially automated driving support when you're on the highway along with traffic jam assist so it's kind of going to do the lane centering with the steering wheel the stop and the go that's pretty darn cool and again the parking assistance package 360 degree monitor like i said parking assistant plus which is where the x7 parks itself it actually comes with a drive recorder as well which records the vehicle surroundings at all times so if somebody hits you in a parking lot or somebody looks a little fishy walking around your x7 and it gets it all on tape that's pretty cool but anyways as far as my overall thoughts go on the x7 insanely high-end finishes it really doesn't get much better than the finishes in this x7 here standard tech and safety is amazing plenty of acceleration for a size maybe it's because i'm in the m50i but i will say i have driven that three liter twin power turbo in line six in the x5 plenty of power there too so really any way you go you're going to be perfectly fine as far as acceleration goes extremely comfortable ride one of the best ride qualities in my opinion in the last 495 cars i've driven but something like that steering feel could be a little bit heavier maybe that's my only constructive criticism for this thing but if that's all i got you're pretty solid with the x7 i will say that this thing is absolutely amazing and that about rounds out this review you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all and i do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i'll see you guys all in the next video stay gold mm -hmm.